Hello and welcome to Themes and Styling in OutSystems. So, what is a theme? A theme is the definition of the look and feel of your application. Every module that has any form of UI has a default theme. When you create screens within these modules, they inherit not only the visual definitions, the aesthetics of the theme, but also the capabilities that you coded in the theme. On the slide, we have an image that shows an application built using what we call a responsive theme. This means that this theme is designed to adapt to the size of the device that you're using. Therefore, you're able to use this application on a mobile phone, on a desktop, or on a tablet. The most important characteristic of a theme is that it provides the style sheet for the screens that use it. When you create a theme, it normally is centralized to be used in multiple modules. And while each screen uses a theme, you can actually have multiple screens on your module that use different themes depending on the objective of these screens. As you can see on the right hand side of the slide, there's more to themes than just the style sheets, even though the style sheets are the most important things. Another important thing is that it defines common layouts and we'll talk about these in a few slides. So how then do you write the style sheets in your themes? There's a dedicated editor for style sheet editing in the OutSystems platform. And you can write standard CSS rules using a syntax highlighting editor. You will see that as you're writing your CSS, the effect on the screens that you may have open on the editor will be immediate. If you pay close attention to the right hand of the slide, you will notice that the editor has several tabs. Each of these represents a different style sheet. As you probably know, style sheets cascade, and that's where their name comes from, from one to the other. This means that style rules that are closer or more specific take precedence over rules that are further or more generic when applied to a particular HTML element or in our case widget. In the editor then, the further right you go in the tabs, the more generic that style sheet is. So in our example, on the rightmost tab, we have the CSS from the London theme that is then augmented by the CSS in the London Fix theme that serves as the base to our module's theme, which is OSMDB. Finally, this module's theme can be fine-tuned by the CSS that is specific to this particular block called Star Display. While this right-to-left order is simple to understand, one subtlety worth noting is that in order to ensure that your applications have a consistent look and feel, the style sheet of web blocks is the first to be loaded into the generated HTML by the platform, thus making it the most generic and the lowest in the inclusion order of rule priorities. This is because web blocks are very frequently used to create custom widgets that you will want to reuse in several modules, and that way, you retain the possibility to customize their look and feel in the more specific style sheet. So in our screenshots, assume that our screen homepage is included in a module that has the theme CSS load order and that the screen homepage includes the web block block container. How does these rules apply and what order are they included? So the first CSS to be included is the web block, whereby the web block says, as far as I'm concerned, test class should be green. However, since this web block is used in an application that decides that test class should be yellow, the theme states, no, no, over here test class is yellow because it fits the style for this application. This is normally where you will want to leave it. But if for some reason the home page screen needs to have an override and say, look, locally to this screen, test class needs to be red, it can do so. And this is the order of inclusion that allows you to do these fine tunings. So you've defined your style sheets. How do you then actually go about using the styles that are defined in there? The simplest way really is to use the style classes property on your widget. 
There, using the drop down, you can select any of the rules that you've created in your style sheets. Should you want to apply more than one rule to the same element, you can separate them using a space. If for some reason you want to have styles that are applied depending on a certain condition, use the extended properties as the right hand screenshot shows. So in this example, we're overriding both the style and the class attribute of the underlying HTML element and we're setting it to a value depending on the situation being dangerous or not. For your benefit, here's a list of what is the underlying HTML object to each of our base widgets. This will allow you to write the correct CSS rules for each one of these widgets. As mentioned previously, themes go beyond the style sheet. We also use it to define common screen layouts. So over here, in these properties that are highlighted, you can define what web block by default dictates the structure of standard screens, that's the one pointed by the layout property, the structure of info balloons and pop-up screens, and the structures of emails that you'll be sending from this application. Furthermore, you can also select which blocks will be placed by default into the placeholders for the header, the menu and the footer. These properties are very handy and are heavily used when creating screens via scaffolding accelerators, which is something that we'll come back in another lesson. So let's have a look at how these theme properties influence the layout of a freshly created screen. Our home screen on the right is a standard screen and as such has got the layout block as its root widget. This standard layout has many placeholders defined inside where the developer will then create the screen content as you can see from the widget tree. Notice however that the header, menu and footer placeholders are immediately pre-filled with the appropriate blocks also from theme properties. Of course, there's nothing keeping you as the developer to then go over there, remove or adapt any of these placeholders. In closing, there's just time to mention the special menu block. This block is designed to provide built-in support for single level or even two level menus by working together with two specific static entities called menu item and menu sub item. You can drag and drop any screen on your module into the menu block with or without opening it in the editor and an accelerator will kick in to create the appropriate links and the static entity records that make the menu functional. Since the menu block is, as we've seen by default, included in all screens, every screen uses the input parameters of the block to inform it which menu option should be highlighted for that screen. This is a very powerful and very handy feature that greatly accelerates your screen design. And that's it for the basics on themes and styling in the OutSystems platform. See you in the next lesson.